Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Science. In this episode I want to teach you about the process of meiosis which leads to the moment of fertilization. So what does this mean? Meiosis is the process that your uh, testes and ovaries use to produce sperm and eggs. The testes produce sperm and the ovaries produce eggs and meiosis is the process in which this occurs. Within biology we refer to eggs and sperm as gametes. These are sex cells and we refer to them as gametes. In these two images here I've got electron uh, electron microscope photographs of sperm trying to fertilize an egg. Uh, electron, microscope, electron microscopes take black and white images and so these have been colorized after the image has been taken in order to give us um, a clearer picture. Okay, let's begin. In this image here, I've got a sequence of events that leads to the production of egg or sperm cells. So let's start at the beginning at this one here. You can see the classic X-shaped chromosomes, which are telling you that the chromosomes have been duplicated. If you're not quite sure what that means, watch the previous episode on mitosis. Now, meiosis is actually very similar to mitosis. It has the same stages, but it does have a couple of extra factors to it that make it just a little bit more complicated than mitosis. In stage one here, it's actually very similar to mitosis, where you've got your duplicated chromosomes. This image number two, your chromosomes are lining up along the equator. Image number three, your chromosomes are being pulled apart to the opposite poles of the cell, once again very similar to mitosis. Image number four, they're nearly all the way to the poles. And image number five, the chromosomes have been separated and the cell is starting to pinch in the middle and it's getting ready to divide. Image number six, you've gone from one cell to two cells. And if I do the chromosome count again, let's assume these are human cells for now. So here I've got my duplicated chromosomes, 92, 92. So here we're starting to separate. I'll do a 92 here as well. And then once they have been separated, I've got my 46, 46. 46, 46, and here I've got two cells of 46 as well. Now so far it's very similar to mitosis. Again, if you're not sure what exactly is occurring here, re-watch the episode on mitosis. From here, however, it's a little bit different. The chromosomes line up along the equator again. Now they do not duplicate this time, so they remain as 46, 46. They have not duplicated. And you can see that the chromosomes are being separated again. Now they're still remaining 46, 46 until eventually they've been separated to the opposite pole once again. And this has happened without the chromosomes duplicating, which would mean that the chromosome number has actually halved to 23 at each corner, 23 and 23. You've ended up with four daughter cells. Now these four daughter cells could either be eggs or sperm. Um, I'll just draw them as circles and depict them as egg cells. So within the process of meiosis you do go through a, uh, a duplication phase where you go from 46 to 92 chromosomes 
and then you separate those chromosomes back to 46 when you go from one cell to two cells but then those two cells divide again to make four cells that have half the number of chromosomes. Now why does meiosis do this? Why would meiosis have the number of chromosomes? Let's have a look at that. Here I've got another image of the sperm cell, the sperm gamete, fertilizing the egg. It's able to penetrate the outer shell and make its way inside. Let's have a look at the inputs at the very beginning of our flowchart here. The adult female has got a 2n number of chromosomes, meaning the full set of chromosomes, and for humans it's 46. The adult male also has 46 chromosomes. Now the process of meiosis for both sexes can occur, and for the male, the process of meiosis produces sperm with 23 chromosomes, and for the female, the process of meiosis produces eggs with 23 chromosomes. And that half number of chromosomes is represented by the letter N. So you notice the 2 is missing. Same with the sperm. Now once the sperm fertilizes the egg, you combine the genetic material of the egg and the sperm. Remembering that the sperm has got 23, the egg has got 23, when you combine them you form a zygote and it brings you back to the wanted desired number of 46 chromosomes. You need 46 chromosomes in order to survive. Sometimes you can get conditions occur where you have an incorrect number of chromosomes. For example, Down syndrome is when you have an extra chromosome. But assuming everything has gone according to plan, your sperm should have 23 chromosomes, your egg should have 23 chromosomes, and your zygote, once your, sperm, once your egg and the sperm has combined in a fertilization event, you go back to 46 chromosomes. After that, that's where mitosis takes over. So meiosis is responsible for producing eggs and sperm, and mitosis is responsible for our growth and development. Now for males, males continue producing sperm throughout their entire life. However, as males age, the quantity and quality uh, of the sperm decreases. For females, you are actually born with all of the eggs that you need at the beginning of your life. When you're born as a baby, you already have all of the eggs um, inside of you. So you grow, you undergo meiosis and you grow all of your eggs while you are still developing in your womb. Which means that the egg that we all come from was actually first developed while our mothers were inside of our grandmother. While our mothers were inside of our grandmother, that's when all of our eggs were grown. And so we have a special connection with our grandmothers because the egg that we come from was grown inside of our mother who was also inside of her grandmother, or sorry, of her mother, our grandmother, when uh, the egg that we come from was developed. So meiosis produces sperm and eggs, mitosis allows us to grow and develop. Let's have a closer look at how meiosis actually produces eggs and sperm, produces gametes. Meiosis comes in actually two stages. So meiosis 1 is very similar to mitosis, very similar. I've got the same acronym here, IPMAT, and I've got my interphase where the DNA is duplicating, prophase um, when the DNA chromosomes are starting to condense and become visible, metaphase they're lining up along the equator, 
and anaphase and telophase when they're being pulled apart by the spindle fibers and where one cell pinches in the middle and turns into two cells. However, there is a second stage for meiosis. And I just want to remind you here we've got 92 chromosomes, 92 chromosomes, 92 lined up along the equator, and then eventually they get separated out into 46, 46. So stage two of meiosis, which mitosis does not have. Here I've got my two daughter cells from stage one. So one cell has created two daughter cells and I take these two daughter cells and put them here. These are the two daughter cells from stage one. In these cells I've got 46 chromosomes and I've got still got 46 chromosomes here and 46 chromosomes here. Don't allow the X shape to confuse you. The 46 chromosomes line up along the equator, same as usual, and they get pulled apart. But because the chromosomes have not duplicated, your 46 chromosomes end up getting halved when they're pulled apart. So you end up with 23 chromosomes here, 23 here, 23 here, 23 here. And so your first original cell ends up producing four daughter cells that have half the number of chromosomes, 23, or we can label it as N. And this one is 2N. So this could either be an egg or it could be a sperm. And when the sperm fertilizes the egg, 23 plus 23, you return to your desired 46 chromosomes that you need in order to survive. Now I'm also leaving out one other special factor of meiosis that does not happen in mitosis. And that's recombination. So during prophase 1, so if I come back to here, during prophase 1, so during prophase 1 here, your chromosomes do something interesting that does not happen in mitosis. Here I've got, let's say, these are my maternal chromosomes. So this is the original chromosome from mum, and this is the copy, the duplicated version of it, and it's joined in the middle by a centromere. Here is the original chromosome from dad, and here is the duplicated copy from dad. During prophase 1, these homologous chromosomes, duplicate homologous chromosomes, will actually hug each other. They'll combine and twist into each other, forming what's called a tetrad. And what this does is it actually mixes the genetic material. It creates new combinations, new variations. If you look around you in a classroom, you'll see that everyone looks different to you just in one classroom, let alone the entire planet. How is all that variation possible? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The fact that everyone has different parents, and also the fact that even in the creation of gametes, you have a mixing of the parents' genetic material, creating new combinations, new variations, until you can no longer really refer to them as the maternal chromosome, the one that comes from your mother, the one that comes from your father, because they're all mixed now. The chromosomes have exchanged genetic material, making them more varied. So if I come back to meiosis 1, some stage during prophase, these chromosomes will swap genetic material and they'll become mixed together. The homologous pairs will. The non-homologous pairs won't cross genetic material. They need, to, they need to match. 
But if your homologous pairs are matching, they can exchange genetic material to create new combinations. So that increases your potential variation exponentially. That can occur across all of your homologous pairs. Also unique to meiosis is the fact that you end up halving the number of chromosomes. So the combination of halving the number of chromosomes from 2n to n and also recombination occurring gives meiosis a couple of unique uh, attributes when compared to mitosis. But the point of meiosis is to produce sperm and eggs that contain half the number of chromosomes and to also increase variation through recombination. Let's make a quick summary and compare mitosis and meiosis. At the very beginning, you have your parent cell, so your full complementary set of chromosomes. So here you would have 46 chromosomes, or 2n. Both mitosis and meiosis doubles your genetic material. So in both of these cells, I end up with 92 chromosomes. But this is where the first difference occurs. So during prophase, the duplicated chromosomes will exchange genetic material, creating new variations. Whereas in mitosis, this does not occur. Mitosis produces clone cells, identical cells. All the cells are the same from the ones that came from before it. Whereas the genetic material that meiosis produces is different. That's a key difference between mitosis and meiosis. Metaphase is largely the same. The chromosomes line up along the equator, like so, keeping in mind that the chromosomes are mixing their genetics in meiosis, but they both line up along the equator and your first split happens, your first telophase happens. For mitosis, you still got 92 here, but after the split you return to 46, 46. And this is where mitosis stops. If you wanted to uh, copy these cells, then these cells will have to duplicate their genetic material to 92 and then they can split off once again back to 46. But generally speaking, we can end mitosis once we go from 92 back to 46. But for meiosis, it's different. Here is the first split and it's showing you that the genetics have been mixed, the genes have been swapped over with their homologous pairs. And here we've got 92. Here we've got 46, so we've halved from 92 to 46. But instead of these cells duplicating in order to divide again, they do not duplicate, unlike mitosis. They do not duplicate. Instead, they divide again, and you end up with four daughter cells that contain half the number of chromosomes of 23 and that's where it stops for meiosis so these cells can represent either sperm or eggs they contain half the number of chromosomes and once they fertilize with a sperm or egg it goes back to 46 and then mitosis can begin to grow and develop your human or organism i hope you've enjoyed this episode of science um, there's some notes in Jacaranda and, of course, Education Perfect um, to help you understand further. Thank you for watching this episode, and I'll see you next time in class.